Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to make a little teddy bear pouch. As you can see, it can be made in a variety of colors. And I've even made a panda that I can show in another video if people request it. But today I'm going to show you how to make this little brown guy. It even has a fabric liner and button closure. Okay, let's get started with what you'll need to start this. You'll need a size F or 2.75 millimeter, sorry, 3.75 millimeter hook. I prefer the boy hooks. And my neighbors put their dog on the front porch and is not very happy. So there's your hook. You need a yarn needle, a large eye needle, scissors, a stitch marker. I prefer to use a bobby pin. needle and thread a pair of buttons for closure and a small scrap of fabric if you have a 12 by 12 piece of fabric it'll definitely be big enough for this piece. Now it is optional. You don't have to put a liner in if you don't want to. You also need a small amount of white yarn. I use Red Heart Super Saver White. My main color is Karen One Pound in Nutmeg. My secondary color is Red Heart Super Saver in coffee. And you don't need a whole lot of black, but you do need a, quite a bit more than you do of the white. But black, I use Red Heart Super Saver black. So let's get started on the project. Okay, to start out with, we're going to take our main body color and we are going to chain 21. So, on the hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 19, 20, 21. Okay. And you want to make sure that your stitches aren't too tight. If they do end up being too tight, you might try using a size bigger hook because we're going to be working in both sides of the chain. So now we're going to work in the chain. So we're going to go in the second chain from the hook so you don't count this loop. There's one and two. So we're going to go into this chain and we're going to work a single crochet in this stitch and in each stitch across all the way to the end.
You know what? This is is the very bottom of the bear bag. Sorry for all the background noise. I don't have very good lighting in my house. The birds are being extra loud today because it's rainy and overcast. And I guess they don't like it being rainy, so they are complaining. Alright. So now this is the last chain. And we're going to work our single crochet in there. And now we're going to work two more single crochet in this last chain. So there's going to be a total of three single crochet in this last chain. And now, we got one side of the chain, stitches along, all along one side of the chain. Now we're going to work along the back side of the chain, which little bumpies left over. On the back side of the chain, are what we're going to be going into. So now we're going to do single crochet in each of the loops on the back side of the chain. And this is why we wanted to make sure that our chain was kind of loose, as we want to make sure that we could get into both sides of the chain. If you find out when you're normally working into a chain, if your chain is kind of tight and hard to get into, then you probably want to use a larger size hook for this when you do your base chain and switch over to a regular hook when you start to do your single crochets because that will make it easier for you to get into both sides of the chain. Now we're to our last one, and we're going to single crochet twice into this last one. So now the first chain that we went into has three single crochets in it, and the last chain on the row has three single crochets in it. So now we're going to take our stitch marker, and we're going to start round two. So we're going to go into this first single crochet, work a single crochet in that stitch, place our stitch marker into the stitch, and we're going to go all the way around. Make sure not to go back into that stitch because that's where your first stitch is. So now we're going to go all the way around until we get back to our stitch marker. And we're going to do that for, this is round two, and there is a total of 15 rounds. So once you get done with this one, you're going to do that 13 more times. And I will get back with you whenever I get to the end of row 15. Okay, we're back. And here is the end of row 15. 
and we didn't increase or anything at all in all of those rows. We just went straight up. Now I'm going to remove my stitch marker and cut a tail just a couple inches. And we are going to do an invisible join. So instead of just doing a slip stitch here and having it squished down and very noticeable join, what we're going to do is we're going to skip that first stitch, insert our hook into the back side of the second stitch, and we're going to yarn over and pull it all the way through. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go under the back loop of the stitch that the strand is coming from originally. And we're going to lay that over the hook and pull that through as well. And see if you tighten it up a bit. You can barely even tell that the joint is there. It looks exactly like the rest of the stitches from the top. So now we're going to weave this end in. Leave it in. Stretch out a little bit so that stitch is back to being the same as the others again. And we're going to lay the piece down. We're going to lay the piece down with this on the back side because we want that to be inside the flap whenever we put the flap on. So, start from the bottom corners and squish it out flat. And what we're going to do is we're going to start over here and we're going to count 20 stitches. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And we're going to put our hook in the stitch. So what we just counted was the 20 stitches that are going to be our flap. So we'll pull up a loop, chain one, and now we're going to do 20 single crochet across. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So when we lay it out flat, those 20 stitches go from side to side. Now, the flap has seven rows, and we're not going all the way around. We're going to chain one and turn, but 
Okay, sorry about that, my battery died. Okay. Instead of going in regular rows, going back and forth, since we went in rounds down here, it would look funny if we did that. So we're going to do a technique that one of my friends made called mirror crochet, which makes it where it looks like we went in the round even though we went in rows. So we chain one and we flip the piece around but instead of going into the side that's facing you you go into the back side of the stitch so your hook is coming out where you would normally put it in and we're going to wrap across from right to left and then have the hook face towards the work and pull a loop through go from right to left over the hook and then pull through the two loops and we're just going to do this all the way across It does take a little to get used to, as you can see I'm going very slow at it. So it does take a little to get used to, but it makes for a much better piece. And the birds are being very loud. I wonder if they're getting upset with the rain or they're excited because the rain makes the worms come to the surface of the ground so they're easier to find for food for them. So we're just going in to the right side of the work. And we're essentially I'll show you on the next row, but if you were working left-handed on these rows then it's the same as if you're working left-handed and our last stitch I'm going to chain one and turn the work and see. Can't really tell much of a difference between this row and this row and where we worked in rounds. I do have a little rose ball from my end sticking out. Oh, there's no more fuzz ball. Okay. So you can't really tell much of a difference between where we worked our mirror crochet row and where we worked in rounds. So I already chained one. I'm going to work this row, row three, 
just regular crochets. chain one and we would work row four in mirror crochet as well but I'll show you why I say it's the same as working left-handed because if I was working left-handed I would insert the hook yarn over from left to right which would be right to left if I had the wrong side facing me so you yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, and pull through ball. So for those crocheters who are ambidextrous, you like you can crochet either way. This is really easy for you because you just do one row right-handed and one row left-handed. But for a lot of you who can only crochet right-handed, just have the wrong side of the work facing you, insert the hook from the right side of the work to the wrong side of the work, and work. in mere crochet. <laughs> well, went back into the same stitch. I know it looks a little funny, but you'll definitely be able to see the difference on your work if you do the mirror crochet versus if you just did rows of single crochet. is just a regular row of single crochet. sirens are done blaring at me and I went ahead and finished row 5 and row 6 so now we're going to start on row 7 and we're going to chain 1 and turn with the right side of the work facing us and we're going to single crochet into the first two stitches chain 2 Skip the next two stitches and single crochet into the third stitch. And now we're going to go across until we only have four more stitches left in this row. Thank you. 
one more. So now I only have four more stitches left. I'm going to chain two, skip the next two stitches, and single crochet into the last two stitches. And fasten off. Go ahead and weave in this end real quick. And then we'll move on to the features of the bear. I don't know if you can hear that rain. So there it is. A little flap. I'm going to set that aside. Okay, I just wanted to quickly show you the difference between working in the round with the mirror crochet and working in straight rows of regular single crochet. So when you're working the round, you see how your stitches, each individual row is separated. When you work in straight single crochets, every two rows is separated. So when you work in the mirror crochet, it makes it look like when you're working the round versus working in straight rows in single crochet. So I hope you can see the difference and see how much of a difference that would make in a project like this. And we're going to make an ear, which if you notice also uses the mirror crochet. So we're going to take the main body color I'm going to make a magic circle, chain one, and work four single crochet into the circle. Pull it tight. And now here, I prefer to work over my tails, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Chain one and then flip your yarn to the back side of your work and insert your hook into the right side of your work. And we are going to work two mere single crochets into each stitch. So we're going to end up with eight stitches all together. Okay, 
So now if you look at the front, there's our first floor, and there's our next eight. And I am going to need to start this back inside after I fasten this off, because the rain is coming up onto the porch, and I don't want to get my camera up wet, so sorry about the horrible lighting change that's getting ready to happen, but we're moving inside. Okay, we're now inside, and we're taking our secondary color, which for me is dark brown, and it looks very black here. But we're going to do the same thing that we did for the outside of the ear. Make magic circle, chain one, work four, single crochet into the loop, pull it tight, chain one, take our yarn to the back side of the work, and work. two mirror single crochet in each stitch, but do not fasten off at the end. There. Four. Sorry, I'm going out of frame. Seven. And now for the eighth stitch, just pulling up the loop, we're not finishing the stitch. We're now going to clip the yarn, bring back our main body color, and finish the stitch in the main body color. I'm going to chain one and turn, insert our hook into the first stitch, and we're going to take the outside of our ear and make sure that we flip it over to where the back side is facing us. So we're putting the two wrong sides together. I'm going to go into the very first stitch on this side. And now we're going to work working through both pieces, working two single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the second, and we're going to repeat that over the next six stitches. Two, and then one, two, And one, two, and one. Now we're going to leave an extra long tail because we have to sew this to the main pouch. 
So there's your little ear. It has the dark on the inside and the light main color on the outside. And now we're going to make a cheek blush, which I'm using my secondary color, my brown, for that. Make a magic circle and chain one, work six, single crochet into the circle. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I have an extra one, so I'm going to take it out. So now, one, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, it's really hard to see in the sliding the dark yarn. So you pull it tight, and we're not going to chain, we're going to go. in the round, so we're working two single crochets in each stitch now. and 12. So we had 6 in the first row, 2 in each stitch is 12 in the second row. We're going to fasten off with a long tail and we're going to do the invisible join where we skip the first stitch, pull it through from right side to the wrong side on the second stitch, then go under the back loop of the original stitch and pull the yarn down through it. So now you can't even see where it's joined. And now we're going to work on the eye. So we're going to take the black yarn with a magic circle and chain one and we're doing eight single crochets four five six seven and eight one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yep. and we're just pulling it tight, leaving a long tail, and invisible join. So now you make two ears, two cheeks, and two eyes, and your main body piece. And once you have two of each of these made, we'll get to the sewing. Now to start with the sewing, we're going to take the cheeks and our main body piece. And you can place the cheeks however you like. I personally like them in the corners here. So I'm going to take and just sew it into the corner here. 
The trick is making sure that you're only going through the front piece and not through the back also because you don't want to sew your pouch shut. So we're just going through up through one stitch, down through the next, all around the cheek. And the only real rule here is that you don't want to put your cheek past the crease there. So now I'm going to turn this inside out and tie this back string in a knot. Because since this is going to be a pouch, we want to make sure it's extra sturdy. Clip off your end. And now for, so you would do the same thing on the other side. Now we're going to put on an eye. And again, you can place the eyes really wherever you like. I'm just placing it where I want to put them on this one. And you do the same thing that you did with the cheek. Just go up through one stitch and down through the next until you get all the way around. Down through the next. There's the eye and the cheek. I'm going to turn it inside out. And oh, if my strand of yarn hadn't messed up. In this eye, clip it off, and now we're going to sew on an ear. Again, you can do the placement however you like. I just prefer the way it looks here. And you're just whip stitching the edge 
bottom edge of the ear to the piece. Make sure that you go through both the front and the back, both the front and the back. Sorry, I was out of frame. So whenever you go through you want to make sure that you're getting both the front and the back of the ear. And now we're going to take and tie off strand for the ear. And then I'll come back whenever I get the other side done. Okay, now that we have both of our ears and eyes and cheeks sewn on, and the only real guidelines for this is to try to keep your cheeks and your eyes and ears all along the same rows so they're all even. That way it just doesn't look funky. But right now we're going to do a highlight on the eye. So we're just going to come up with white. Leave an end and hold on to that. And go back down. There's a little highlight on the eye. Turn it inside out. And do a square knot to tie it off. Flip the back. And now on the other eye. Try to make sure that they're even. Keep the tail. Hold on to that. Go back down. Now we're going to do another square knot. Now your bear looks a little more lively. Now sometimes when you tie it, it can get a little tight, so you might have to loosen it up. Just take the eye of your yarn needle and stick it under there and wiggle it around a little bit. It'll pop it back up. Now for the nose, we're going to use a double strand of yarn. And you want it to be even between the eyes. I like going along the bottom row. Again, leave a tail to hold on to. And I count one, two, three, four over. 
and now we're going to go across it one more time. So come back up the hole you originally went down, and go back down. And now we're going to go in the middle of them. It's hard not to catch little strands. Okay. And go down. Back up into it. And go down. So now he has a little mouth. We're going to go on the inside again and tie those off. And snip the ends. And there's your little bear face. So now all we have to do is sew on the buttons. We'll go in these holes. That's the chain stitches that we made in row 7. And I'm going to go ahead and sew a liner into it. And I'll be back to show you the finished project. Okay, here is the finished product. We have the buttons on the back and it just depends on how far and we do seven rows and I do one for the turning row and then one past where the button would be so my buttons are five rows down on the back stitches from the edge for the edge of the button and then for the liner I used clear thread for these because it's a lot easier you can barely even tell that the threads there especially if you have them multicolored fabric and all I did was I did a whip stitch just like when we put the ears on just whip it around it's whip stitch to hold the fabric in and my fabric I don't like having a seam on the bottom so all I did was I measured out a panel that was about half an inch wider on, e on either side so it's an inch wider than the total project and then twice the height plus half an inch or an inch higher half an inch for to fold over on either side And then I just fold the fabric in half and sew with a sewing machine up the sides and then fold the top over. Now whenever you're sewing the inside, when you sew the seams on the side, you need to make sure that your fabric, you have the right sides facing. So I have another piece of fabric over here for another one and see here's the inside what I want on the inside of my purse. So I don't want these sticking into the inside of my purse. So you have to make sure that the right side of the fabric is together when you fold it and sew up the sides. 
me flip over the top and put that in the bag and then just whip stitch along the top edge. You don't have to put a liner in it. It's pretty pretty nice even without a liner in it but the liner makes it where you can't see all of these little ties you don't have to see any of that so there you go finished little pair I hope you like the pattern and you can make these for yourself or you can make them for gifts but please don't sell anything you make with this pattern it is a free pattern so i want to be able to keep it free for you guys there you go